Today, our vocabulary words include vibration, sound wave, and echo. Hey there, boys and girls. Today, we're going to be having a lesson that has to do with music. And I'm going to be sharing some books that has to do with sound. Since I'm sharing the books, there is a reading connection in music today. Then also, because we're going to be learning about vibrations and also how sound travels, and sound waves, there is a science connection. Also, when we study about how our ears work, there's that science connection. And then we're bringing back what's in the box. There's something in the box that we need for our lesson today. Out of this book from Sounds and Music, I got several ideas um, to help me learn about sound and how sound travels and also vibrations. I'm going to share out of this book really just the first paragraph, which is very important. I read it so often that I pretty much have it memorized. It says, what is sound? The world is made up of many different kinds of sounds, but high sounds and low sounds, sharp sounds and flat sounds nice sounds and horrible sounds are all made by vibrations. Guys, what are they made by? Vibrations. Vibrations, vibrations and that is our key word today, a vibration. All right, this is what I want you to do. Our friends at home also, right now I want you to take your hand and hold it out and just let it kind of flop around like this. Shake your head no. Mm -mm. This is not a vibration. All right, now freeze your hand. I want you to move it back and forth really fast in a little bitty space. Really fast in a little space. Now that is a vibration. Let's do that again. Let it flop around. Mm -mm. This is not a vibration. Freeze it. Move it fast in a little space. Yes, good job. Yes, that is a vibration. All right, now you can relax. All right, so we had just talked about how anything that makes a sound has a vibration. If I were to slam this book shut, there's a vibration right there. Did you hear it, everybody? Mm -hmm. You did hear it. Yeah. So there's something else that shot out, but it's something that's invisible. Some of the kids at home, they might remember us talking about this last year. There was a vibration that made the sound and you heard it, so something went into your ear, and that is called a sound wave. Say that, guys. Sound, sound wave. wave. All right, so Kayla, did you hear that? The sound wave went into your ear. Way over here, Mr. Myers, did you hear that? So the sound wave traveled and it went into your ear. Sound waves fill up the space and they go everywhere. Even if I turn around and my mouth is facing the board, Right now, raise your hand if you can still hear me and keep it up. Raise your hand if you can still hear me. All right, I see every hand up. That means that even though my mouth was facing this direction, the sound waves went everywhere. Kind of like if you dropped a rock in a pool or if you maybe had somebody jump off a diving board into the pool, um, the waves spread out every direction. All right, so did you know that they can sometimes go through things? We're getting ready to test that out. Mr. Caleb, we're actually getting ready to send you outside the door. And I'm just gonna say, Caleb, can you hear me? If you can hear me, you're gonna give us a thumbs up. If you can't hear us, you're gonna give me a thumbs down. I might have to be a little louder. If sound waves go through something, sometimes in order to hear it, it's gotta be a little louder. So we'll, we'll do this little test. Now, if something is too thick, if a wall is too thick, the sound might not go through it, but sound can go through some things. Right, I'm just gonna use a normal talking voice and we'll see. Caleb, can you hear me? Okay, he did not give a thumbs up, so he might not have heard. I'm gonna make my voice a little bit louder. Caleb, can you hear me? Oh, he can't. All right, so maybe, maybe the sound waves went through the cracks. Maybe through the glass where the seal is, I don't know. But this door is thinner than the wall. All right, so Caleb, pause right there. 
Whenever I talked in a kind of a low speaking voice, you didn't respond, so I guess you didn't hear him. I did turn my volume up just a little bit and he gave us a thumbs up. Thank you. Now guys, remember we're studying science today. When you study science, you learn how things work. So I think it's pretty cool learning about how your ears work. So here's a big, um, a big picture of your ear. Here's what happens. We were talking about sound waves. The sound waves travel through the air. Now my hand's going slow. This actually happens really fast. The sound waves go into your ear and it bump, bump, bumps into this wall. What's that wall called? You can... The, the eardrum? Yes, it says eardrum right here. This wall is the eardrum. And this wall is super sensitive. It's paper thin. And if you were cleaning your ears, usually you just clean like right through here, maybe with a Q-tip. If you've ever had your ears cleaned and it actually hurt, you felt a little bit of pain, that means whoever was cleaning your ears accidentally touched that eardrum because your eardrum is so sensitive. That's why um, you probably need a grown-up to help you clean your ears. They, they only need to clean just the, the little um, part that's closest to the opening. All right, so when the sound waves come in and they bump, bump, bump into the eardrum, it ends up making the eardrum do what? What's that word we learned today, guys? Vibrate. Yes. Vibration. It, yes, there's a vibration right there. But right after that, we've got three of the littlest bones in your whole body. Now, I did learn that you've got over 200 bones in your body. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, over 200? That's amazing. But in your ear are the littlest bones. Here's one of them, and it just happens to be touching the eardrum. Here's another one, and then right here is another bone. Remember, they're just so little. They're also little, sensitive, and fragile. All right, since one of them was touching the eardrum, and that eardrum is already vibrating, what would be happening to the bones? Yes, vibrates. They are vibrating too. And since they're touching each other, each one of them is vibrating. The eardrum's vibrating, the bones are vibrating, and then this one at the end, it is touching this really weird coiled up looking thing. Um, the word is kind of hard to remember, but that is your cochlea. Now, some of the kids are like, that is a hard word. Well, I do like to drink Coke. I know a girl named Leah. Cochlea. That's how I remember it. Sometimes you have to think about, how can I remember that word association? All right, so here's your cochlea. The cochlea, I've learned, is full of some weird stuff. A bunch of little hairs surrounded by liquid. A bunch of hairs surrounded by liquid. They're not your ordinary hairs. They're actually called sensory hairs. Well, right here, the eardrum, since the eardrum started vibrating and these bones, one of them was touching the eardrum, they're vibrating. And one of those bones is touching the cochlea that has hairs and liquid on the inside. What do you think, guys, is happening to the hairs? They're vibrating. Good job, good answer, the word of the day today. The hairs inside here are also vibrating. They will shoot messages to your brain that tells you what you just heard. Now, if you hear a loud sound, I'm getting ready to be loud, just so you know. I'm gonna scream. Ah! <laughs> then all that happens with really big vibrations. The sound waves come in and they're bumping a little harder into your eardrum, making your bones inside there vibrate harder and stronger making the little hairs inside the cochlea vibrate harder and stronger. Shoots a message to your head that says, that teacher just screamed, she, she must be crazy. But then, if you've got soft sounds, let's just, okay, this is actually a dinosaur. Let's pretend like it's a kitten. And it's purring. That's a soft sound. That means when the sound waves come into your ear, they're softer, more gentler. Just a little vibration in the eardrum. Just a little vibration through the bones. Just a little vibration in the hairs that are in the cochlea and shoots a message to your brain that says, oh, that's the sound of a little kitten. It must be happy because I hear it purring. 
and that is how your ear works. And you've got one on one side of your head, one on the other. So this is happening on both sides of your head right now while I'm talking to you. Now I'm going to read the book, Talk About Sound. And my related arts friends are going to help act out some of the pages. Do you enjoy making sounds? Hey, let's see what this sounds like. Oh, I gotta do it again. That's really cool. What? Oh, that's awesome. Now let's see what this sounds like. That sounds cool. What sounds do these things make if you bang on them? I see plastic, ceramic, glass. All right, let's hear what it sounds like if you hit wood. Hmm, this is wood. All right, let's change to the sound of metal. What about the sound of plastic? There's a plastic bucket right there. This is my favorite. You're talented. How about some... What different sounds can you make with your body? All right, let's hear different sounds that Caleb can make with his body. The chest. Clapping, snapping, and Caleb, can you think of anything different that your body can do? Oh, that's pretty good. And your voice. Okay, and now your voice. Uh, a yelling voice? Ah! <laughs> a singing voice? La, 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 la. Can you whistle? Put your fingers on your throat as you talk or sing. What can you feel? So if I'm talking, I vibrate also. When you look at me, you don't see me shaking back and forth, but you can still hear me talking, so I must be vibrating. Just so you know that when, you, um, when anything makes a sound, it vibrates, whether you see it or not, including you. So right now when I'm talking, I'm vibrating. I've got vocal cords behind the skin in my neck. Here's what you can do. Take your whole hand and lay it right there on your neck. Then repeat after me. Hello, Miss Markham. Hello, Miss Markham. How are you today? How are you today? Now say la la la. La la la. La blah blah. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Now, you should be able to feel a little tickling, the vibrating right behind the skin right there. Hold a ruler on the edge of a table. Press the end down and let go. Can you hear a sound? What do you see? Hey guys, you can make a sound with a ruler. Do this in music class, not art class though. Can you see the ruler vibrating? Let's look at that in slow motion. Whenever you hear a sound, there is something moving. This movement is called a vibration. Try this with a rubber band and see. You can make musical sounds with rubber bands of different sizes or by plucking the strings of a guitar. All right, guys, a guitar string also vibrates. Listen. Now let's do that in slow motion. Strike a triangle with a beater. 
Touch the triangle while it's ringing. What can you feel? Oh, that's cool. I feel it vibrating. Awesome. All right, so what if you stop the metal? What if you stop the vibration? Let's see what happens. Now, try and uh, do it a little faster and grab the metal and let's see what happens. Ooh. Didn't vibrate as much. Yeah, well you felt it still vibrate, but the sound cut off. Okay, okay. That's good. Right. When something stops vibrating, the sound stops. something for you to try. This is called a thunder tube. This Let me show the cool. kids real quick. I didn't know what the sound was. <laughs> I know. Um, on the bottom, this is actually a drum. That's a coil and that's what's going to be vibrating. But on the inside, what's on the inside? It's hollow. Hollow. It's empty. I don't know if you can see oh, that or not, man. but pretty much nothing. Now, you gotta be careful with this. If I were to pull on the little um, coil, I'd probably break it. But what's gonna happen is the vibration is gonna make sound waves come out the top. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're just gonna make the sound waves come out the top. But then when I tell you to, I want you to trap the sound waves and let them out, trap the sound waves and let them out. Can I hold he's, it? He's been really wanting to play with this thing. All right. All right, so for right now, just make it work. Make it work. It looks crazy, doesn't it? All right. Now I'm so, put my hand on top. Yep. Trap them and let them out. <laughs> okay. Now you're going to try something else. Okay. Just like with your triangle, uh -huh. when you grab the metal, you tried to stop it vibrating so it stopped the sound. Okay. So this time when you shake it, you're just going to not pull, but you're just going to grab the coil, see what happens to the sound. You don't even have Man. to pull it down. Just grab it and, That's and cool. okay, try it again. This automatically stops. The yes. Vibrating everything. A anything that makes the sound vibrates, and if you can stop that vibration, you will stop the sound. I'm going on Amazon to get me one of these. This is cool. <laughs> Thunder tube. Thunder tube. How does someone's voice reach you? The sound travels through the air as sound waves. Throw a stone in a pool of water. Watch how the waves spread out. Sound waves move through the air in a similar way. Cup your hands around your ears when you're listening to music. Does the music sound louder? You're catching more sound waves. How well can you hear on a windy day? Wind can blow sound waves away. Sound also travels through water. Put your ears under water. What can you hear? How well does sound travel through solid things? Put your ear against one end of a plank. Can you hear if someone taps the other end? This also works on a table without a plank. Does sound travel through the slack string of a toy telephone? What happens if the string is stretched tight? If you shout in a tunnel, the sound bounces back. What is that called? Echo, echo, echo. How can you use a tube to help you hear from farther away? By putting your ear on the tube and one end of the tube over this watch or another object, you force the sound waves to only travel through the tube so that you can hear it better. Can you hear if someone speaks through a narrow tube? Try it again with funnels stuck in both ends. How does the sound change? It should be louder. How can you make your voice sound louder or softer 
and more muffled. All right, I'm gonna use this megaphone to make my voice sound louder. If you've ever noticed, sometimes people will be outside and they try and yell and they put their mouth like this with their hands up, trying to make the same shape as this megaphone. Small on one end and open on the other side. So it ends up making your sound waves work together as a team. And when anytime you've got a team, you can be stronger. Let's listen. Good morning, class. Good morning, class. How are you today? How are you today? Go team, go! Go team, go! What about if I make my tongue vibrate like this? Let's listen in the megaphone. Wow, interesting. Okay. What about that muffled sound? Well, the mask that we've had to wear, um, that can make your voice sound more muffled. Good morning, class. Good morning, class. How are you today? How are you today? Go team, go! Go team, go! Definitely, you have to talk a lot louder with our mask on right now. Some sounds are high, others are low. Which of these bottles will make the highest if you bang on them? What do you notice about the sounds the long and the short nails make? Just like with both the glasses of water and the nails, when you have things of different sizes, they make different sounds. Things that are bigger tend to make a lower sound. Things that are smaller tend to make a higher pitch sound. Let's see. If you could hear no sound at all, how could people talk to you? If you couldn't hear anything, you can still talk to someone using sign language. Here's two ways to say I love you in sign language. I love you. You can also say it using one hand like this. In sign language, here's the letter I, here's the letter L for love, here's the letter Y for you. If you put that together, I, L for love, here's the Y for you, I love you. All right, Mr. Myers, guess what? What? It's finally time that you can check yes. out what is in the box. What's in the box? He doesn't even know. What is this? It's a tuning fork with a hammer. A tuning fork. Ooh. Huh. We were studying about vibrations and this makes a really great vibration. Okay, cool. If you hold it and hit it with the hammer. Can I try it out? Sure. Okay. Oh, man. I don't know if you can, but I can almost see it vibrate, Miss Markham. That is cool. I like that. Hmm. All right, so you can feel it. I can feel it. I can hear it. Why don't you... But it vibrates um, my hand also. Okay. Why don't you see what it sounds like when you gently touch different items on the table? You mean use the hammer? Yes. But, uh, well, use the hammer on the tuning fork. <laughs> you, you Make the tuning fork work, work with the hammer and it touch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what you're talking about? Is that what you want me to do? Let's try touching the, the vibrating tuning fork to the items. Oh, that's wow. cool. Caleb, we'll have you hold the triangle up. I like the sound it makes too. Dinner time. Okay. Okay. Now the metal. Well, like, can I try the metal? Yes. That was a good one. What about the and, drum? Yeah, go ahead. Drum, 
my really favorite. Good one. Drama is my favorite. All right, I've got something else for you. What else you got? I'm gonna move this box. Okay. And right here, I've got a pan of water. Okay. First, we can just touch the pan after you make the tuning fork work. Okay. All right, Mr. Myers, now yes. we are ready to try this in the water. This looks fun. Right now, your tuning fork is not vibrating. I'm going to get a little closer to the water with the camera. And uh, go ahead and touch the water without it vibrating. Just stick it right in the middle. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right, it wasn't vibrating, so nothing's happening. All right. All right, go ahead and, wait, hang on. Use the little rubber part when you hit it. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Ooh. Wow. Wow! Uh, <laughs> you got uh, sprayed got in the face. The kids didn't actually see you get sprayed in the face, but you did. That Try cool. that one more time. Okay. Uh, Let's see what would happen if we do slow motion. Wow. In music class, we've been studying about sound, sound waves, and vibrations. We've learned all different types of sounds, low sounds and high sounds, and different pitches, and all kinds of different sounds. I know that you all have been studying with Miss Markham. But I wanted to remind you today about all these great books that you can read and even learn more. Because we all know the more you read, the more you know. Well, I'll start off with this book here. It has easy to make homemade projects. You can make things from things that you have at home. You can take ordinary objects like cans and bottles, paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls, and make homemade instruments. I know that is one of Ms. Markham's projects. So get a jump start. Look for books at your local library or look online. Maybe you and your parents can look together on Pinterest for homemade ideas. Right here we have the nonfiction book that Miss Markham acted out in class. Here we have Magic School Bus. Magic School Bus has a whole series of books about sound. This one in the class, of course, always takes a field trip. Here they take a field trip to a museum and hear all different kinds of sound. There's even another one about bats and how the animals use sound for echolocation. Check that one out as well. There are all kinds of Magic School Bus books and there are videos online that you might find. Here we have another science book that has drums, bells, and whistles. Wonder what it's about. Look for this one at your library. Oh, it even has musical instruments to learn to play. Awesome. Here we have another one that I know Miss Markham has shared with you. This one gets into different parts of your ear. How interesting to see how medically our ears work. And more musical notes. So check these books out and more at your local library. Thank you so much. Now we're ready for your challenge. Your challenge is like your homework. Today, your challenge is to leave us a comment and list three things that you can find that vibrate. These three things, they could be anywhere. They could be at your house, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, pretty much anywhere in your house. Your items could be things that you find outside. Or if you travel someplace like the library or the grocery store this week, look for things that vibrate. We would love for you to list three but it would be extra cool and bonus points if you can list more than three things. If you have trouble thinking about things that vibrate, remember that sometimes you can see something vibrate when it moves back and forth at a really fast pace um, in a small area. 
or sometimes things vibrate and you can feel it even though you don't see it vibrate. So I'm interested to see what you guys put. Try and list three things. If you can list more, awesome. We would love to see even more things. Remember to leave it in the comment section. If you have trouble with that part, if you have trouble spelling or finding where to put those comments to leave us a comment, have your parents help you with that or whoever takes care of you. Good luck. Now, leave us a comment and tell us at least three things that vibrate.